So we took this compound and run the ring closing metathesis. And these are the scaffold. Very simple. Well, very simple. No. As you know, as usual, when you do it in the lab, there are problems to be solved and so on. But at the end of the day, it was this was done, all this work was done by a postdoc in one year and a half. And uh, I'm sorry. Okay. So some success, well, quite a bit of success. Some failures. For instance, this one. Huh, I would have liked to get this one, but I couldn't get it. Why? Because when you do a ring closing metathesis here, you generate an intermediate uh, metallocycle, which is four membrane. And of course, four membrane is not so favored. So, what compounds the. It reacts, of course, with the, with, with the group's catalyst, but it gives a cross metathesis. So this one was not accessible, and we had another one here, two other ones here. And the rest, uh, you know, the years were quite good for this type of compound. We could even do that with, for a two, is a beta lactone here, which is an interesting compound, and we could prepare th this compound by using this strategy. Now, the next step, that's what we have to do now, because this is very recent unpublished work, uh, is to decorate, I would say, the compounds to make uh, bioactive compounds and test them. That's so why we have to build the library. But you can build many libraries, starting with this very simple chemistry, which is inspired from natural product. But it's not natural product, it's different. OK, let me finish by this. Uh, then we go a little bit more detail into the chemistry. We were interested also for several years in some alkaloids, but again, not making the topal synthesis, which would be <laughs> of, of a product which is readily available in nature, for instance, or a compound which is so difficult to, to, to prepare that nobody else will repeat the synthesis that they will publish. So useless, I would say, uh, chemistry. But one of the things that you notice in many alkaloids is that they have complex piperidine rings. So we thought that this common substructure could be of interest and we should perhaps look at scaffolds, which are uh, inspired from the structure and which contain these piperidine rings. And that's one of the things that uh, we decided. The challenge was to develop short, practical, productive synthesis uh, of this complex piperidine derivative. And I like the desired reaction. And I like to decide the reaction because this is a reaction which is highly convergent. And in one step, you have a significant increase in structural and stereochemical complexity. In one step. I don't speak about mechanism here. One, see, one reaction, you get a product which is much more complex than the starting material. And the complexity results from the fact that you construct one ring, but you can also construct more than one ring using intramolecular reactions. You, can, you introduce functional groups on a ring. You introduce stereochemistry on a ring. Everything is done in one step. And you have a wide diversity of possible reactants. Of course, here, I decide to choose a reactant where the nitrogen, because I want to have a piperidine, don't forget. So I need a nitrogen somewhere. The nitrogen is incorporated into the diene. You could have put the nitrogen in the dienophile, but that had been done very successfully by several people, Paul Grieco and so on, many in the United Wainrep and so on, and uh, uh, I think uh, Dale Bogo as well. But we decide to put the nitrogen into the, 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 the diene system. It could be there, one is a diene. I call this, uh, it's a vinylimine, but it's, I call it one is a diene, and this is a two is a diene. We need, of course, an easy access on the reagents. We'll discuss briefly this one, but this one, of course, we know is an olefin which is activated with an electron with organic. There are plenty of olefins inside this. So we have plenty of dienophiles. We like to be able to use catalysis because 
We'd like some of these dyne may not be reactive enough, or so the, the dienophile may not be reactive enough. So we'd like to uh, be able to catalyze this reaction. And in this field, there is a huge number of catalysts which have been reported. <laughs> so it's rather safe. Reactions are radiospecific. So you can predict the substitution pattern of the adduct. The reaction should be stereospecific. So you can predict the relative configuration of the adducts because it's linked to the configuration of the reactants. Eventually, we'd like to make it enantioselective, although I told you it's not necessary at the beginning, but it can be done using the Lissardo reaction, production now of a single enantiomer by using a chiral auxiliary or a chiral catalyst. And that has been done also. And also, at the end of the day, it's an uh, ecological reaction. A plus B give the product no waste, if it's 100% yield, of course. Okay, I won't discuss the one is that I in. Why? Because it would be too long. It's a specific chemistry. Also, there are the possibilities to make uh, uh, piperidine by this method uh, lower than with the two is that I in, because the compounds are less reactive. But they are interesting. They are interesting compounds. So we got interested in the two is that I in. How did we? What do we want to have? We want to have something like this, you know, where we vary because we like diversity. So, X should be alkyl, cycloalkyl, aryl, heteryl, electron donating group because we'll make uh, this other reaction where the diene is nucleophilic and the dienophile is electrophilic. So, these are the groups that we want to be able to, to put on this uh, position here. Z. We like also alkyl, cycloalkyl, but no aryl, heteroaryl, electron withdrawing group, maybe also alkoxy group, oxygenated functional group, amino group, whatever. Now, what about why? Why for us was important? And eventually we decided to stick to one group. And the group was a sililoxy group. TMSO, for instance, or whatever, silicon derivative. Why? Because if you do that, look at this. You have OCN. You could bind this nitrogen-containing compound to a carboxylic acid because this part at the oxidation level of a carboxylic acid. At the same time, it would increase the reactivity of the diene because sililoxy is electron donating and also increase the population of the s cis conformation because it's a bulky substituent that you put in this position. Everything is favorable for the DSR reaction. And at the end of the day, this sililoxy uh, group will end up on a double bond. And so if you hydrolyze, you generate the carbonyl group and you can do chemistry on the carbonyl group. So now, not only we will make a DSR reaction, but we will start with the component making the diene. So the idea is to take a piece here, a piece there. I'll do it here first. This piece, this piece, combine and combine with the dienophile. And this is shown here for this uh, publication that we, we did several years ago. We, you start with an eminoether, you can make one kilo of that in one less than one day. Acid chloride, you need triethylamine, I forgot it. You generate the azadiene. Well, of course, we have isolated all this compound, identified this, this compound. There is only one isomer produced, but we do that one pot, introduce the dienophile, and you get this with yield from 43 to 94 percent. One example with 43, all other examples above 80 percent. One pot. <laughs> So the general synthesis of, piperi, of pyridone and pyrimidone using activated nitrile and activated acetylene. And it can be adapted to solid phase synthesis as well. That's the kind of chemistry we want to make diversity and make this compound accessible, not in, in milligram quantity, but in kilogram quantity in that particular case. It's very easy chemistry. But so we have 
many of these compounds. And of course, the substitution pattern here is controlled by the choice of your starting material. And you can have many groups here, ester, uh, trifluoromethyl, tosyl, aryl, heteroryl, tibutyl, cinnamyl, and whatever, fluorine, chlorine, stalimido. We have, we made all these compounds. Okay. Now, if we go to the piperidone, of the piperidine, now, what we want is a source of nitrogen, a carboxylic acid derivative, an aldehyde, and the dienophile. And we can link that to make it intramolecular. Then we built one ring, two ring, three ring, depending on what we follow. So the method should be very general. Creation of four bonds, two CC and two CN bond, and four stereogenic center. That is the possibility of 16 uh, uh, stereoisomer. So this is a more recent work, uh, and I show you the sequence. Of course, this is not the kind of sequence that we have done. I didn't tell a student, you start to do that, and he came with, to me with the result that you will see here. We have isolated each step. We have identified each intermediate. We have studied the condition to optimize each of the step. And at the end of the day, we end up with this sequence of four consecutive reactions, no isolation. And the first step here, shown here, you mix these two, wait for 15 minutes, get this compound, add acid chloride triethylamine, get your diene selectively with the stereochemistry that is shown here, add your dienophile, get your cyclohydrate. Here, sometimes you have to eat it up, and so on, depends on the reactivity of your dienophile and the reactivity of your isodiene as well. And this compound can be even treated with an electrophile to make a bond here. Usually, we use a proton, generate from methanol, and we obtain the pyridone here. That's a sequence of four consecutive reactions. And if we choose a dienophile which has stereochemistry, like, for instance, myelinimid or whatever, we get stereochemistry there. There is a stereochemistry there, and there is a stereochemistry there. This is defined by the nature of the dienophile. So if we take something like this, it will be always be cis. If you take something like this, it will always be trans. So it's stereospecific. But on top of that, what we observe is that we, we take a cyclic dienophile. This is the isomer. This is a stereochem I'm sorry. stereochemistry at this point. We have endoselectivity, very high endoselectivity. <laughs> if we take an open chain dienophile, we have open exoselectivity. That's a unique case in the Dilsalder literature. And the reason, well, we have analyzed that, we have made calculation, is due at the polarity of the transition state and some interaction between the electrons here in the nitrogen and the electron pair of this uh, carbonyl group. In fact, this reacts like this. Of, of course, there is no choice because you have, you have a cyclic system. So this is S-trans. But here it acts like this, with the carbonyl here, as cis. And that's these two uh, change of conformation in the transition state makes the following result. So it's a huge impact. And this selectivity are very, very high. So we have a unique kinetic stereochemical dichotomy between cyclic and open chain dienophiles. Of course, opportunity for more diversity. You took a cyclic dienophile, you go to the endosery, you go to the other one, you go to the exosery. That's what you want if you want to up the, the different reacting conformation is probably responsible for that. High is general, radioselective, cystero specific, high endo or exoselectivity, highly conversion, also adaptable to solid phase synthesis. Here's some of the compounds. But I just show you that to show you a limitation. The limitation came from the aldehyde. The aldehyde could not be inolizable. Remember, we use triethylamine and so on. If it's inolizable, you start to have problem. Yields go down. So well, we, st we begin to worry about that. Till we found that if we take a cinnamyl derivative, so cinnamaldehyde, for instance, alpha methyl cinnamaldehyde, as shown here, the reaction goes beautifully, and of course, 
At the end, you just oxidize this, and you get a carbonyl group. If you have a chlorine here or a bromine here, you oxidize, you get a carboxylic group, you have access to all sorts of pipicolic acid derivative. So this limitation actually became an advantage because we could use this uh, uh, synamyl derivative and we'll show you an example. You notice we can have an amino group here, that's the derivative of an amino acid, of an hydroxy acid. There are many interesting compounds in this slide. One example now, complexity. Here are the four components. One reaction, you get to the increase of complexity. You start with this thing, and then you get this with stereochemistry here. And uh, ozonolysis gives you, that's the synamyl derivative, gives you the methyl ketone here. Then you can cyclize to the fourth ring in a very short number of steps and large quantity. In the aspidosperma series, this is the dienophile, this is the acid chloride, this is the starting aldehyde, which is easily accessible from indole. You get this in one step. This is the yield for the four steps, of course, but it's only one isolation. You cyclize and you generate this compound, which in three steps has been converted into the aspidosperma alkaloid. And you can, again, introduce variation at the different point here. Intramolecular reaction, well, now you link the carboxylic acid to the dienophile. And you run the reaction, aldehyde, the source of nitrogen, and now you have this acid chloride, but it contains the dienophile. Very fast cycle addition. You cannot see the diene, and you obtain now bicyclic piperidine derivative very easily. And we have made many of these. And uh, just draw your attention. Now, you see, here the endo exoendo was not what we expect. No very high selectivity, because it's intramolecular and we have some constraint. Fortunately, passing that twerk around, immediately separate the two compounds. You just filter, and you get the endo and the exo. So our industrial partner was very happy, because he got two for the price of one. You know, So uh, this was uh, particularly interesting in this kind of compounds here, now we have two heterocyclic ring here, a pyrrolidine derivative or pyrrolidone derivative and a piperidone derivative, available in one step. Okay? So, I show you what we have done with the partner. I show you the real thing, but the student in the, in the lab, it has been reproduced at, uh, by an industrial uh, group making service work, and uh, they use not three grams like we use in the lab, but they use about uh, 100 or 200 grams to start with. And you see, that's a simple chemistry, which leads to the compound which will serve, which contains the carboxylic acid and the dienophile. So that's the acid chloride, you see. So that's the step that we are interested here. Uh, we have the aldehyde, of course I show you only one, but we have made several one. You make the four-step reaction and you generate in one shot a mixture of the exo and You filter through the colon and you get a total yield uh, which is uh, 2.40. And this uh, yield, this yield here uh, is for the uh, this transformation here, the four steps, we have a bit depending on the system that we have used, the phenyl group and so on, between 66 and 80 percent. And these are the privileged scaffold. Very rich scaffold, of course, because now you have possibility to diversity here, 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 three carbonyl group, and you can modify that. And how did we do that? You have to be selective. So we study that for a partner. So if you take this compound, you realize that you have a strain, more strain, five membering here than the six membering. Here you have a double bond character of the lactam, which is less than in the system here, because that we have one, one more carbon. So that should be more basic. It can be reduced more selectively, totally selectively, by BH3 and THF. You get the piperidine. Now, if you want to cleave this, you get this compound here. You can reduce this group as well, or you can uh, 
modify the carboxyl group by putting TFA and do variation diversity on this three position. And this is being done, not by us, by the industrial partner. 